I've done a lot of mechanical engineering job interviews, probably well over 100 over the last seven years. That includes internships and full-time interviews for these mech and roles. So I've seen a lot of these patterns over and over and over again. So in this video, using a skit, I'm gonna share with you how these interviews tend to go. Okay, moment of truth. Time to join the virtual interview. Hi Tamer, my name's Carl. Sorry for joining a couple minutes late here. Um, is this still a good time to chat? Yeah, uh, it's still a great time. How's your morning been so far? Good. That, that's great. Uh, I'm doing well too. Thanks for asking. Anyways, I'll start off by telling you a little bit about the company, the team. Then I'd like for you to tell me a little bit about yourself. We'll talk about some of the projects on your resume. And we'll end off this 45 minute interview by me asking you some technical questions. Sounds good. I'm the director of hardware engineering here at Shaper. We're using an intuitive design software that leverages artificial intelligence to enable engineers to create optimized mechanical systems. It offers real-time simulation, stress analysis, and automated design recommendations. This reduces the time and effort when it comes to prototyping for engineers. So they're building a CAD software. Why does it have to overcomplicate it like that with all these buzzwords? We're based out of New York City and we're looking to hire a mechanical engineer that will help us design the future of CAD. Now, I'd love for you to tell me a little bit about yourself. I graduated from the University of Waterloo with a mechanical engineering degree in 2021. Oh, you went to Waterloo? Yeah. Well, every engineer I've worked with from the university it tends to be pretty great. So I don't know what they teach you there, but I've heard some really good things. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear. I'm glad our reputation has been good. Thanks. Anyways, keep going. Of course. So after uh, graduating university, I worked at Tesla as a mechanical design engineer, then at a robotic startup as a product design engineer, and I'm currently working at an energy startup as a design engineer as well. Now, a lot of my work at all three companies over the last few years involve going through the engineering product development process, you know, turning product requirements into engineering requirements, creating detailed designs, assessing design issues, and prototyping pretty quickly. I've become really comfortable using a bunch of different CAD software, like SolidWorks, Fusion, Onshape, and Katia. I've also become really comfortable making 2D engineering drawings, using GNT, employing DFM and DFA. So yeah, it's uh, quite enjoyable for me to go through that mechanical engineering process and I have a good amount of experience with it that I'd hope to be able to bring on to your team as well. Okay, that's good. Um, well, having a look at your resume over here uh, and your portfolio. Was that answer good enough? Should I have gone into more detail? I don't know, hopefully that was fine. How about you just tell me a little bit about your favorite project? For sure. Um, so one of my favorite projects is a personal project of mine that I like to call Happy. I work on this project with a few friends. The product is essentially a toilet attachment that analyzes urine before it's flushed away to give you information that can allow you to track your health and detect diseases like diabetes or UTIs. How did you make this? Yeah. Um, so I created 3D models in CAD and I made some detailed 2D engineering drawings in SOLIDWORKS for a lot of the parts that made up this product. I also used an Arduino and several sensors for the electrical infrastructure and I fabricated it using 3D printing and laser cutting. I mean overall it was a pretty successful project because I was able to provide hydration, dehydration levels that were at roughly around 95% accurate. Seems like you're quite passionate about this project of yours. Oh yeah, he definitely likes me. I'm definitely gotta get the job. Like there's no way you would have said that otherwise. I understand this project was a prototype that you built, but if you were building this for a company and they asked you to make it at a high volume, how would you go about doing that? Huh? Okay, Tamer, think, think, what do I know about high volume? Oh, okay, I think I know what I'm going to say. So for high volume of parts, uh, you know, it's important to consider the material that it's going to be made out of. And this toilet attachment is plastic, so I would use injection molding because it can also handle relatively complex geometry. Any other reasons? Well, yeah, um, although it can be a little bit expensive up front, injection molding that is, this process can actually end up being cheaper overall if we make a large enough number of parts. 
What type of plastic would you make this out of? Mm, ideally, I'd want to use a type of plastic that is like moisture resistant, has decent impact strength. So I think a plastic like poly polypropylene would be a, a good choice here. What about the use of a different plastic like polycarbonate instead? Do you mind if I take a second to think about that? Sure. Okay, let me quickly see what chat GPT has to say. Oh my God, can it hurry up? Let me act like I'm still thinking. Hmm. Hmm. J just give me a second to gather my thoughts. Yeah, of course. Okay, finally. ChatGPT took its sweet time. Okay, well, although it is possible to use it, polycarbonate tends to not be as machinable as polypropylene. This means it will be harder to create the shape we want, or it may be possible, but it's gonna cost us a lot more. Mm, okay, I see. I wonder if he could tell I was using ChatGPT. Probably not, like, th there's no way he noticed. Well, on your resume here, I see that you mentioned you led a team of Templos operators uh, for the EVT build of the robotics company you worked at. Can you tell me maybe what's the main thing that you did to optimize the line? Yep, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, so there's quite a bit that I did, uh, but I think the most important thing would be applying lean principles um, like 5S, where I basically tried my best to remove unnecessary items, organize tools in an efficient way, and obviously develop SOPs or standard operating procedures that the operators would follow. Um, this helped me reduce setup times. Uh, it helped me increase the efficiency of the assembly process because at the end of the day, doing this eliminated downtime and was able to streamline the entire assembly operation. Okay, sure, that sounds great. Uh, let's move on to the technical interview questions now. Um, I want to share with you this virtual whiteboard. I'm going to send you a link to it. Let me know when uh, you can see it. Yeah, sure. Did you get it? Um, no, not yet. Oh, okay, yeah, just got it. Okay, let's start off with the first question. Actually, you know what? I'll give you an option. Uh, I'm going to give you three topics and tell me which one uh, you would like to start off with. We have physics, material science, and heat transfer. Mm, okay, definitely not physics because I know he's going to give me something crazy like estimate the mass of the sun material science could be doable but what if he asks me something like wild you know what i'll, I'll just do heat transfer yeah um yeah let's go with heat transfer all right great let's say you have a resistor carrying current how would you be able to determine how the temperature of the surroundings will change due to that resistor huh what does that even mean maybe i should have picked material science uh, could you give me a second and just think it through yeah Take your time. Okay, well, we just need a basic understanding of heat transfer here. Um, I know about conduction, convection, radiation. Hmm, should I quickly use ChatGPT? No, no, it's okay. I, I don't think I need to. I can, just, I can just use my brain here. All right, I'm sure I can figure this out. Okay, so I think there's a few steps we gotta do to answer this question. Okay, let's hear it. First, I know that, you know, you mentioned we have a resistor carrying current. So because we have this resistor carrying current, there's gonna be power that's dissipated and I know that the governing equation for this power being dissipated from our resistor uh, is P equals I squared R. So as I said, we know current and we know resistance. And all we need to do is find power. Now, second, we know that the power is the rate of energy dissipated. Um, that's just by definition. So we can find the heat dissipated by the resistor by multiplying the power we just found with the amount of time sort of the resistor was turned on for, and that should give us how much heat energy was dissipated. So essentially, we know that Q, uh, which would be like the heat energy, would be power times time, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so the power would be the what we found in step one, and time, which is, I think, fair to assume it would be something that's sort of that we can empirically find out by, you know, connecting the resistor, having it be on for a while and just timing how long it was on for. The last thing we want to find is the change in temperature. Uh, and the way we do that is by using the heat capacity equation, which is Q equals uh, MC delta T. So uh, we had just found Q in the previous step so that's the same 
and our goal um, is to find per the question uh, delta t uh, let's move on to the second question i definitely got the first one right let's go okay tamer chill chill keep it cool keep it cool let's say you have two metal balls one is steel and one is aluminum both of them have the same mass how could you determine which one is which oh i've definitely seen this question before i know how to do this but hey l let me pretend like i've never seen it before hmm give me a second to think about this um well generally we know steel uh, is two and a half times denser than aluminum uh, i mean that's just a fact um that we know so uh intuitively um, I think the steel ball will have its mass be more tightly packed because, again, it is denser. So because of that, it's going to have a smaller volume. Okay, that's a good way to look at it. But how else can we uh, solve this question? How else? Isn't this the only way? Bro, why do you got to overcomplicate it? I'm sure my answer is good enough. Uh, okay, let me think of something else. Okay, um, I think we can also do it mathematically. Uh, let me use the whiteboard again, but just erase uh, the stuff from the first question. Okay, so let's see. We know that uh, rho equals mv, where, uh, you know, rho is density. Okay, um, I'll just write the short version of it. And then m is mass and then v is volume okay and so we know steel as i mentioned is denser um so steel has a higher density and aluminum has a lower density and so oh wait sorry sorry about that i uh i think i messed up the equation sorry sorry um it's sorry mass over volume that's our equation i was like something i'm adding up here <laughs> yeah um so v is yeah volume m is mass um, and so, yeah, as I said, we know steel has a greater density and aluminum has a lower density. And so we can tell that the rho density and the volume are inversely proportional. And so that means because steel has a greater density, it's going to have a smaller volume. Hence, uh, it's going to be, you know, just a smaller ball. That's just an S. And then aluminum, because it has greater density, it's going to have a greater volume. So, uh, sorry, L4 is going to be larger. Um, and this is assuming that this mass uh, is constant between uh, both balls, which I think is a fair assumption. So yeah, that would be like another approach of answering your question. So um, I know we have a couple minutes left now, but before I have off, um, I want to give you the opportunity to ask me uh, one question. Uh, well, I mean, I'd love to learn a little bit more about what the next steps are um, in the interview process. Great question. So how the process works at this company is you'll do a first interview with me. Um, and uh, if I like you, then I'll move you to the next round of interviews, which will be a second interview with five other engineers on the team. We'll then give you a design challenge if that second interview goes well. And then finally, we'll invite you over to present your design challenge to us in an on-site interview panel um, style. That concludes the interview. Have a good rest of your day. Well, uh, I look forward to it. Um, and thank you, uh, you as well. Wait, a second interview? There's more than one? I hope this skit was entertaining and educational and give you a better idea of what you can expect when doing engineering interviews. Obviously, every hiring manager is a little bit different, but they all love people who are consistently learning. If you're looking for a place to fill in gaps in your knowledge, then you should check out brilliant.org or sponsoring this part of the video. They have thousands of interactive lessons on topics like advanced math, AI, data science and neural networks really they're any stem students best friend personally as a mechanical engineer in my undergrad i didn't really learn a lot about computer science fundamentals it didn't really take a lot of programming courses and so because of that i always felt that my computer science knowledge is a little bit lacking but brilliant has been able to help with that because they can teach you the basics as well as advanced concepts of computer science to try everything brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days check out the link in the video description we'll get 20 percent off brilliant's premium annual subscription anyways i'll see you in the next one peace Thank you.